Okay, hello everybody. Welcome to Korean Atlanta Mentorship. And in this video, uh, we're going to talk about how um, giving most people more money and resources is actually counterproductive. It's definitely going to make most people inefficient, right? And so what happens with a lot of people is they have this mindset that whatever they have, all the tools they have in front of them is not enough. You ever deal with people like that where you give them like some of the most awesome stuff and they act like they, they don't use it to its full potential? I mean, even think about your cell phone, right? So many people don't even use a cell phone to its full potential and it has access to so much more information than we had back 20, 30 years ago. In fact, I would argue that someone who lives in a poor neighborhood right now with the cell phone actually has more resources than billionaires like 30 years ago, right? And the problem is, is that when you give more people, like more or most people more money and resources, there's a certain skill set that you have to have in order to handle that, that increase in money and resources. And most people don't have it because it, it requires a, a lot of um, cognitive effort to be aware to not fall into the traps that most people fall into given when they're given more stuff, right? And in fact, you know, if you hear most politicians speak, they always have that mindset that whatever is in front of you right now is just simply not enough and you can't do anything. So you got to be given more money, right? So uh, I think if you ever do like a 10 year look back program on any sort of a uh, politician or a government funded program about fighting some social or political issue like homelessness or uh, hunger or housing, then uh, uh, it always, I think every stu study I've, or most studies I've read is like, oh, the problem's worse, right? I, uh, I don't know if you ever like heard about like how the LA Housing Authority, I forget what the actual name of the government organization was, um, spent billions of dollars and nobody could find it, <laughs> right? And the reason I talk about this is that, I, again, I meet so many people who are like, oh my goodness, I need more knowledge or oh my goodness, I need more tools. And it's like, dude, you just need to practice the basics, right? And that's the culture that I, I really want to emphasize that we partake in is that we're just always practicing the basics over and over again. Again, I always mention that Bruce Lee quote where I, would, I fear the man who does um, – one kick 10,000 times than, than someone who does 10,000 kicks once. Yet we live in a society where we just kind of, uh, there's a new novelty every couple of years and we don't use it wisely, right? I mean, there's, think about AI right now. So the way that I think about AI, I feel like it's just the potential is just going to be wasted and nobody's going to use it to its full potential because every sort of new breakthrough or technology that we've had, people just never use it for, to its full potential, which is kind of sad, right? So the way I, I the way I think about this is, you know, every time I've given somebody a juicer, um, instead of people like juicing every single day, they just kind of, uh, you know, say, oh, my goodness, I have all these health problems and then just put the juicer in like a closet and never use it. Right. Again, not giving health advice because I'm not a doctor. But what I'm saying is that people don't use the current tools at that they have at their full potential and they just kind of give up and say, oh, my goodness, like, I just can't do what, it, you know, uh, achieve my goals with the current tools that I have. Most people are like this. Right. And then if you give people like that more money and more resources, they're, they'll just find ways to waste it in, in, in ways that are unimaginable. Right? So it, just to kind of um, expand on this topic, uh, there's two things I want to discuss. So number one is uh, Jevons Paradox. So I don't know if you've ever heard of Jevons Paradox, but basically all it means is the more society becomes efficient, like the more there's technological advances uh, that make society efficient, um, society ironically becomes more wasteful and inefficient, right? So basically a guy in the 19th century, William Stan Stanley Jevons, noticed as steam engines became ever more efficient, um, Britain's appetite for coal increased rather than decreased, right? And you kind of notice this with a lot of things. So let's say like uh, computer uh, computers and uh, hardware and software. As hardware becomes more efficient, <laughs> software becomes more bloated, right? Um, so it's kind of sad that that's the way it is. And you could kind of see this in video games too, where, you know, if, if they re-release an old video game from like 20 years ago, maybe like back then it was only like five megabytes. And then now it's like two gigs at least, or five gigs. 
Um, but that's because of Jevons paradox, right? So the more efficiency we achieve, the more inefficient we become. So we always have to be cognizant that that's going to be happening when, whenever we uh, acquire better tools, right? And at least if we're cognizant of that, then at least uh, I think we'd um, be intentionally less wasteful. But efficiency always leads to pretty much more consumption rather than less, right? So the other thing I, I want to mention is, I don't know if you've ever heard of Milton Friedman, but he's an American economist who passed away in the early uh, 2000s, right? And he talks about something called the, the four ways of spending money. Again, he's a very um, anti-government uh, economist, right? He talks about the free market, and he says that government is, is bad, bad, bad. And one of the reasons why he says government is bad is because of the four ways of spending uh, money. So here's a picture of Milton Friedman. And I saw him on a PBS, like documentaries and stuff, back when PBS was educational, not whatever it is these days. Um, but one of the things they talked about is that there's four ways to spend money. And spending your own money on yourself, that's where you're going to – you're going to um, – you have a strong incentive to get the full value and be, uh, and he says economize right here, but basically be as efficient as possible. And then there's your spending your own money on someone else, spending someone else's money on yourself, and then some spending someone else's money on uh, someone else. But basically he says that um, from, this is like a ranking system from one to four. And so when you're, you're spending someone else's money on someone else, um, you're going to get the most inefficient outcomes. And this is why like government programs don't work because you have no incentive to make the best of what, what it is that you have, right? So where he talks about applying the proceeds of taxes or donations and, 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 and <laughs> like, so basically if you ever, again, look at Los Angeles housing authority, they don't know where billions of dollars went, but that's because you're spending someone else's money on someone else rather than your own money uh, on yourself. And so why am I mentioning this is because one of the reasons why so many people are uh, very inefficient when you give them more money is because they have no skin in the game or the outcome, right? So no skin in the game and the outcome, in addition with more efficient technology, creates a very wasteful society. Right. So that's why we always need to create outcomes where people do have skin in the game. And if they're going to be efficient, you know, become um, or uh, encountering tools that are efficient, that they're always going to make the best of it and train over and over and again how to use those tools. This is why I will never give most of you a velocity banking spreadsheet, because if I just give it to you, you're going to do nothing with it, which is the same experience I had. Where if I give you, and I'm not talking about you specifically, a juicer, and it's you're not spending the money yourself directly on yourself, you're not going to get the most value out of it, right? That's why it says create your own spreadsheet or pay for it or whatever, right? But don't just be expect to be given a resources where I'm spending my time and energy for you, and then you wondering why you didn't make the best of it, okay? okay? I mean, Milton Friedman... Uh, he came up with this in like the 90s or something like that about how um, you're basically when you have no skin in the game, that's when you're incredibly wasteful. And this is why this is basically the chart he came up with or the I don't I don't know if you call it a matrix, but the, the list he came up with to kind of sh point out why government in general <laughs> does not do a good job. Right. Now, again, I know some of you will disagree with this because uh, of your political orientations. Now, this isn't necessarily, let's say, like, hey, vote for this guy or that guy or that gal. It's more about if you don't have any skin in the game, the outcomes are not going to be the best, right? And if you're encountering tools that actually make you more efficient and you're not thinking about how do I train myself to become better at using those tools – it's also going to lead to a poor outcome as well, All right? So hopefully that makes sense. But again, um, you know, this is why I just I'm not interested in giving more people more stuff, more time of my time, more money, more resources. So it's like, dude, you just have to t have what you have right now, and 
use it to the, the best of your ability. You being given more stuff, more software, more money for 90, I'll say 5% of the population, it will probably do them more harm than good, right? Okay, well, this is Korean Atlanta Mentorship. So um, just another discussion about human beings and productivity. <laughs> All right, have a good night and we will speak next time.